Mind mapping is a powerful tool for organizing chaos and bringing projects to reality. But when exactly should we use it? Hi, I'm Shang, and I help organizations and individuals think through their toughest problems. In this video, I'll explain chaos and order states of projects and where mind maps fit into the flow, as well as give examples of how I use them to bring ideas to life. First, we need to expand what a project is. Everything we do is a project. Building a new product for your company is a project. Coming up with a business strategy and making a presentation is a project. Writing an essay or studying for an exam is a project. Even planning for your next vacation or trying to figure out major life decisions are projects. The anatomy of a project is that it's got a beginning and an end. In between is a process. If you're making a presentation for work or for school, you're starting with a prompt or understanding your audience. And then the end is the deliverable itself, a PowerPoint deck that then you present to your audience. In this way, the lifetime of a project goes from chaos to order over time. On the chaos side, we have thoughts, ideas, and hypotheses, or prompts for that matter. And on the order side, we have products, output, deliverables, whatever it is that you wanna to show to the world. Our job then is to put in the work to bring chaos into order states. The problem is that we try to skip to the end ordered state or deliverables way too quickly. For example, if you were to create a presentation right now, given a prompt or an objective, where do you even start? There's a whole bunch of other questions like what, what's the flow, what actually goes into it? It almost becomes overwhelming of sorts, right? If you wanted me to, let's say, make an article or video about anti-fragile the book, I wouldn't be able to do that right now, immediately on the spot, because there's so many things that needs to go into the prep. So in order to organize all the different elements, this is where my mapping comes into scene. In medieval alchemy, there is a fabled substance called the philosopher's stone that's able to turn common items or materials like lead and iron into precious materials like gold and platinum. In this way, my maps are like the productivity philosopher's stone. On one hand, you have creative input or chaos. On, on the other, you have productive output or order. Chaos often gets a bad rap for causing a lot of stress and uncertainty, but that's also where the creativity and the possibilities lie. If we try to move too quickly into the ordered states and the deliverables right away, we actually miss the opportunities and the possibilities of injecting all these novel ideas and solutions into the ordered state. In fact, my mapping is not a replacement for all these other excellent tools in the more the ordered state realm, which is Kanban boards like Notion, PowerPoint decks, customer relationship management software that if you are working in sales, for example, or mock-ups of design tools, right? Or even go-to-market strategy and Excel sheets. Mind maps are especially useful in the beginning stages of chaos, where you have so many different thoughts, ideas, and possibilities. And you're expanding out the various different complexities so that you can start narrowing down what you want to put together in a more linear fashion or using those other ordered tools once you have everything put down on paper or on software. And this is why I always recommend sharing your mind maps with any stakeholders or teammates or anybody else that you're working with for feedback before you put in the effort of creating, let's say, mock-ups, websites, presentations, articles, right? A mind map is essentially a blueprint for your project and no reputable architect or engineer would start building without getting feedback on the schema first. Now I'm gonna go through a few examples of how I use my maps in the beginning projects before I start actually designing or building them out. If you liked this video so far or find it helpful, definitely hit the like or subscribe button. It really does help me and the channel out a lot. And let me know in the comments too, if you like me to expand on any of these examples, I could probably make a tutorial video down the line. All right, let's hit it. The first one is uh, from my days as a product manager, as a mobile, uh, building a mobile application called Revel, which is events app. And here we have onboarding tutorial messages going throughout the app, right? So all of these are different tutorial messages. Uh, these are the different app screens in black, right? Uh, different phases. And then after I've mapped out the different tutorial messages that will appear to the user when they first onboard, I draw different um, essential wireframes, low fidelity wireframes. So as you can see, my entire flow here, product development is 
market research, the minimum viable feature set, the design audit, my maps, wireframe, and then finally build, right? So wireframes and my maps are kind of one uh, and the same for me in the same step. And then after I've gotten the uh, feedback from my team, then I'm able to go to the next step, which is actually creating more high fidelity mockups of the application with the different flows based on the map, my maps. Here's another example of these mockups with the different flows. Yep, so here's another flow. This is when we had a content management system on the back end for this mobile application, right? So here you can see that I've got different color codings um, as well as expansions into different screens. And then here, this is where I actually combined the designs and putting them right next to the mind maps to really demonstrate where that flow when going from one screen to the next. And here we've got a simple travel app called Inspur.io. This was one of the earlier applications that I did in London. Uh, and the blue app applications, the blue boxes mean that it's an app screen, whereas the black ones are user actions, right? So you have the entire onboarding flow of welcome, signing up, getting started, um, and uploading pictures to this travel app. And then the user will select photos, confirm all that stuff. So within a simple mind map, I already have the entire flow for the application. And this is the wireframe version of the mind map that I just showed, right? Here you've got, you know, signing on the onboarding stuff, and then you select some photos, upload it, and so on and so on. I also created a mind map for my website, silverandsteel.org, before I started designing and building it. So this is what I call an input-output mind map for product design. And uh, on the left-hand side, these are all the guiding questions, design questions, and other logistical stuff that I need to tra keep track of, and that's actually gonna guide my entire product design, which is gonna be on the right-hand side, which essentially you have home about articles, field guides, and newsletter. These are the actual pages of my website, right? So essentially there is a flow from the left guiding uh, principles and content over to the right hand side. And let's see what it expands out to. So actually quite a lot, right? So this is where, you know, I'm asking the who, why, what, how questions. Um, and then here, these are actually like, you know, the nitty gritty part down to the copy or the text of the website. So pretty comprehensive. And then we've got different arrows uh, going about saying, hey, you know, perhaps different linkages between the different pages, right? So this translates directly into my website. I also use my maps to organize presentations. So in this example, um, I was putting together a pitch deck to the CMO of Verizon Wireless. And here, this is where all the brainstorming is happening. And then what it translates to is a storyboard or a rough draft of a slide that we ultimately used in the pitch deck. And a few weeks ago, I gave a corporate workshop on my mapping for business. But before jumping right into the PowerPoint presentation building, what I did was my map out the entire, well, who am I pitching to? Basically the audience, the goals and the outputs of this workshop, and then finally the story right? This is the, the most important thing. I couldn't have jumped straight into this presentation without actually mapping out the story first. And finally, if you have signed up for my weekly newsletter, nearly every article has a mind map that's associated with it. So for example, this one is coming back from my two week meditation retreat. I turned the road trip, the 200 mile stretch along the highway I-5 into a meditation uh, practice, right? I also did a cost-benefit analysis around um, the increased risk of accidents as well as impact damage to the car. So in order to write this article, I actually created this mind map uh, along with illustrations. And this mind map then translated to the entire article together with uh, different physics equations and probability stuff, right? I would not have been able to write this straight up without creating this mind map first to organize all of my thoughts. There you have it. If you're gonna take away one thing from this video is that mind maps are the philosopher's stones of productivity, translating what we have in the chaos states of ideas, insights, epiphanies, and prompts into productive output or ordered states of deliverables, articles, businesses, what have you, right? 
it reduces a lot of stress because we're now able to craft and shape this chaos in an orderly way before actually jumping into other tools to create those deliverables. All right, guys, if you have found this video useful, definitely hit the like or subscribe button. It does help me out a lot. And leave in the comments below if you have any other questions or if you would like a deeper dive into any of the examples that I gave. All right, until next time, take care.